Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress, and today is the day many of you have been waiting for. Today is the day I show you my battery-powered air conditioning that I run off solar and no generator. Okay, this unit's been running for a full year and some time on Temptress, at least all the times that are hot. I think it works. I'm deeming this thing a working project. Let's go down below out of this sun and talk about air conditioning on a boat running on batteries. News flash for all you people that live up in the north. I'm sure you imagined it. If you go sailing and you go where the palm trees are and the water's beautiful, that means you're going to the tropics. The tropics are hot. They're really hot. Um, first time I went down to Panama, I, I'm from an area with snow deeper than you know my height, and I got used to that. I sailed out of Seattle. Seattle's never hot. So I just think, what's gonna happen to me? Am I gonna just melt into a puddle on the floor? Am I gonna be able to survive this? Got down there, turns out you acclimatize, you drink a lot of water, you function, uh, and it was well worth it. Go, don't let the heat keep you from going. And during the day, it's okay because you're doing stuff and you can always jump in that beautiful ocean and cool down. It's all fine. The problem that isn't good is the nights. Uh, you'll lie in your bed and you'll turn on every fan you own and especially if you're a biggish man, you're going to lie in bed and make a puddle sweat every night. It's just gonna be uncomfortable. While I was down in Panama for those years, I'd be laying in bed every night saying, Clark, you're a clever guy. How would you do this? How could you not be so hot? There's gotta be a way. And I thought of things like using the refrigerator's compressor and like having a reservoir of water in there and then the water would come out through tubes in my bed under my back and cool me down that way. That was my best idea. But I realized that would just cause condensation like you wouldn't believe and be a terrible problem. What you need to do to solve this problem is actually cool the air and build a system that involved in cooling the air that collects the water and takes it away. That's called an air conditioner. Uh, basically, we haven't come up with a better way to do this than that. Problem is, air conditioners use a lot of power. <coughs> While I was down there, there was one boat that ran an air conditioner, like all the time. And I never met the people. They would come into the bay that I would be in. They would leave. I'd come into a bay. They'd already be there. But as soon as they came into a bay, they would anchor down, go down below. You'd hear their generator start, and they would never come out. I say this as a cautionary tale. Don't try to air condition your whole life, because you'll never acclimatize. It'll always be uncomfortable and you will just be in paradise but living inside the hull of your boat. You don't want to do that. You want some good shade, you want good fans, you want to have fun during the day. But at night, there's just no solution for it. There's no reason for it. You might as well be comfortable at night, I figure. So here's my approach. I found a compressor that's like smaller than any compressor that would ever be put in an air conditioner. Most of the air conditioner compressors from the compressor companies are much, much too big uh, to, to use for one cabin and efficiency. Well, why can't I just use uh, a compressor from refrigeration? Well, if you look up the terms high back and low back compressors, you'll know why. For refrigeration, you need a, a low back compressor. For air conditioning, you need a high back compressor to keep it all efficient. I'm looking and looking and looking one summer, and I searched and searched and searched. Well, I found this compressor after a lot of searching. Um, it's very efficient, a little bit less than three times as efficient. I'm seriously, I'm saying that three times as efficient as any other compressor I have ever found. And it's a high back and it's quite small in power consumption and small in BTUs. It was built apparently to cool electronics packages for the US military. The company I get the compressors from, that's all they seem to have sold them for, are these little cooling things that like refrigerate water tubing that goes through, I don't know, something involved in shooting something. And uh, keeping, it, keeping the electronics running when they're in a desert. 
Well, per it's all perfect for us. So I applied that to what's needed to do air conditioning. Decided to take a flyer and bought all the equipment, put it together. I even switched my batteries around, which is why I've done all these lithium battery uh, videos. Put it all together, kind of didn't know if it would work until I turned it on. And uh, when I turned it on, my God, it works a charm. You, you, if you can swing this, if you can make the small amount of power this thing needs, and you're going south, get it. Um, I would certainly get refrigeration for my food first, no question. But this is, I might even buy this before I bought a water maker. <laughs> I mean, it's that important. It, it really improves your life. This is the cabin that we air condition. Um, it's relatively small, has two single beds. The one thing I would change about this boat, double bed would be nice. But um, uh, I should talk about the room itself for a little while. Remember, this air conditioning can't do a whole boat. Don't even think about it. This is for one cabin. It's for efficiency. It's for running off batteries. That's your mindset. Now, this cabin is small, but it has an awful lot of walls. This is outside. This goes into our cockpit. All of these walls are surfaces that radiate heat. It would actually be easier to cool the room if it didn't have the center section and it had like a queen size bed in the place of it. So I think anybody's aft cabin with a door, this will probably work for. Let's take a look. <coughs> All right. Sorry, still got the cough a bit. Uh, this is the air handler. This is the bit that blows the air in where the cold happens. Uh, I installed that up in the head of this closet and drilled some holes for the air to come out. It sucks in uh, air through other holes in that area here. Um, well, I'll show you B-roll of putting that in. Looking at it right now is really awkward. I got all my shirts hanging in there and you just can't see anything because, well, you know what boats are like. But uh, we got some footage and it's probably going over my voice right now of installing. Uh, the cold air comes out of there and it actually cools the boat down relatively quickly. In fact, why don't I just turn it on? So I'm going to close the door and drop the hatch and trust me, I will be turning it on fast because it's a hot day. So it's hot as heck in here, uh, especially with everything closed down. So I'm in a hurry to, to do this. The air will come blowing out of here and uh, I put a little piece of, because I can't show you air, but first thing I want to do here is turn this on because it's uncomfortable, as I said. So it's over 90 in here right now. You hear the compressor start. That runs for 10 seconds and then the fan will start. Get the fan here. There goes the fan. And uh, the pickup for this thermometer uh, thermostat is over here. And I've got it on this piece of copper, so it's going to react quite slowly. But that's the plan. On the other hand, it cools down really crazy fast. Um, yeah, it's dropped a degree already. As you see, it's coming down. This is in Celsius. Um, I'm not happy with this thermostat. I've got another one that I'm putting together that'll be interesting. It not only works like a normal ther thermostat based on temperature, but it watches the humidity. So it can turn the unit on in the middle of the night. If it gets cooler outside, you're still in a small room with two people breathing and the humidity goes up. So it could be cool enough, but too humid and it's uncomfortable. And I find myself getting up in the night and changing the temperature settings. So this other one will be better for a small space. It can turn on the air conditioner either because it's too humid or because it's too warm. Let's see. Well, uh, we are down to uh, 29.6, which is 85 degrees or so. So it's come down pretty good. Let's take a look at the air coming out. So I got this little uh, thermometer dealy here and I'm going to put the probe um, in the hole. And we're going to measure the temperature of the air coming out of the unit here. And what do we have? Well, can't see that with the light. It's 80 degrees, 79. It's going down 78. Um, it'll go down a little more than that. but. Uh, you don't want these things to be running so it's like snowflakes coming out. It, it's only 
like 10 degrees, the way I've got this set up, colder than the ambient air. As the ambient air cools down, the air coming out will cool down. You can imagine how that works. It's like that analogy I, I alluded to during the earlier refrigeration videos. If you think of cold as a thing, and you're at this level of temperature, and you want to lift to this temperature, you lift up the heat. That's not so bad. But if you put a big wall in, so you have to lift way up to a cold temperature and then drop it back down, that is just wasted effort. So I've got it set up in a way that this is not a refrigerator. It won't bring it down to 40 degrees in here. And, it, and the air coming out is relatively close to normal temperature, but it will bring the room down. Uh, we've had a couple cuts, but this has mostly all been real time. I'm down to 77 degrees of the air coming out. And uh, we're down to 28 degrees in the cabin. So it's come from 90 to uh, using the conversion here in Fahrenheit to um, 82 degrees in just, I don't know, what has it been? Two minutes, three minutes? Four minutes. According to Emily's camera with a counter on it, it's been four minutes. <laughs> so that's not too bad. Um, it'll take it right on down. I've got the thermostat currently set for uh, 26 degrees Celsius, uh, which is 79. And it comes back on, I think, at 27 and a half. Um, it'll get the room down to comfortable levels. Geez, how long does it take, Emily? Like 10 minutes? Yeah, especially with the fans on, it doesn't take very long. I'm always wearing blankets by my room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fans. Let me talk about fans here while we're waiting for the room to cool. We've got these things called Scirocco 2s. And I've tried every fan in the world. These are the ones to get. They're just about $100, so they're kind of expensive, but they seem to hold up fine. You can point them in any direction. They're really quiet. They use very little power, and I think this is the fan. Use a fan. Even if you have air conditioning, use a fan. You'll save so much electricity on the air conditioner if you stir the air around with the fan. Uh, you don't want to be wearing, you know, clothes when you're in bed. And having that breeze, especially when it's blowing the dry air that this air conditioner is making for us, you can have it be pleasant with a fan at 80, where you might, without a fan, you might need it to be like 76 to have the, the same comfort. That saves you power. Okay, one last look at the temperature. Yep, 78 degrees coming out of it. And the room is down to 27.9, so it's down to uh, 80 degrees in here starting to get pleasant. It'll run pretty much solid, of course, until it gets the room cool. So once it hits the 26 I have it set for, it will uh, shut off and cycle, you know, like any refrigeration unit. But it'll come right on again in just a few minutes. As the night progresses, it cools down the room. And when it cools down the air and then it cools down the walls, it starts running less and less. When I start the evening, it's running constantly. And when it's running, this uses a surprisingly small amount of power. I'm going to pull a meter out and actually show you the power in a minute. So we'll find out what it's really using. But the point is by morning, in fact, this morning, I uh, actually downloaded a stop, um, a, a stopwatch application. And uh, so I could measure right down to the second, how long it's been on for, how long it's been off for. It went down to, oh, uh, what's the ratio? It, it ran about one third. Um, but I worked it out in watts, so when I report the power, I'll tell you how much power it was using on average based on that. Well, that's about it for what it feels like. Let's go take a look at the actual unit and look at the power it's consuming. If you remember the other video, this is where we keep our refrigeration equipment. It's all here. This area, mostly the black components, that's the refrigeration for our refrigerator. The blue and the rest of it here is uh, for the air conditioner. Well, where to start? First off, again, just my little deal. It's a mess. The wires are not run well. The reason for that is I installed this fully expecting it wasn't going to work and I was going to have to pull it out change the math, change the engineering, put it back together, you know, like six times because it was new technology. But I obsessed about it and apparently I got it all right because I put it in and it just worked. So I haven't messed with it a lot. It's just how I initially installed it. So anyway, please forgive this crap. 
what we have here. Well, we got a compressor. It's this little black thing down here. And uh, that, just like the other uh, refrigeration cycle, you refer to that other video on theory, please, um, compresses the gas and sends it out to this. And this is a, an old one I had hanging around, but this is um, two tubes, one inside the other. The inner tube has salt water running through it, and the outer gap between the tubes has the fluorocarbon. So the salt water pulls the heat out of the fluorocarbon and lets the fluorocarbon become liquid. That's the condenser. It lets, lets it condense. And it leaves there. It uh, moves on, goes through a filter dryer, goes out to the air handler. All the other magic happens in that cupboard, and then it comes back and returns and does the cycle. But what you're all really probably wanting to see right now is how much power does this thing use? You know, can you run this off batteries on your boat? Let's do it. Okay, I got a couple clamp-on meters here, and I'll have to show you with a little camera because uh, this is all awkward. But uh, the way I've set the circuit up, there's two places it pulls power. So I'm going to use two different meters. Anyway, this is the actual power the darn thing's using. Totally, right out of the batteries. So, we've got two and a half plus, let's call it 11 and a half. So that'd be 12, 14. 14 amps at, I believe we're running 13.3 because we're running off lithium. So 11 times, uh, sorry, 14 is it? Yeah, 14 times 13.2 is this, because I can't do math right now. Turn that into watts, and it's this. And if my memory is right, this number is pretty close to 200 watts. So when the thing's running, it's sucking down 200 watts from the batteries. It's a manageable amount, if you ask me. As soon as it gets the room cold, as soon as it's done and it starts cycling, when I have come back and checked all this, it uses about 50, 60 watts on average throughout an hour. You know, it's resting time and it's running time. And it goes into that cycle within like, let's say a half hour. So you pay your power to get the room cool. And then you, the two people, the heat we're making and the heat that's residual, you know, from a hot day uh, coming through the walls, you can pump that out for an average of, let's say 60 watts. I think it comes out to be about hundred amp hours of lithium will get you through the night. Uh, we have 200 amp hours of lithium and never used it all up. Uh, I really don't exactly know where the line would be for 100 amp hours. But, you know, one store-bought lithium battery added to your current lead, that little charge manager thing I'm developing, and this system, enough solar panels and you're good. Oh, enough solar panels. How much is that? Well, we're carrying right now, um, let's see, three, six, seven, three, six, seven, eight, nine about 900 watts of solar up. And that's more than plenty. In fact, our radar shades that quite a bit, so really think of it as probably an average of more like 800 watt, uh, watts of solar. And truly, it's enough. We are running our inverter most of the day, running the computer, the power-hungry computer we need for YouTube. Emily's been doing game work on it all day. Uh, we have other solar, we just don't bother to put up. We've got a big wind generator we don't turn on because that's enough, even with the air conditioning. And we find that we can also, uh, like after lunch, we take a little siesta and uh, maybe watch a movie during the hottest part of the day with the air conditioner running, and we're still fine. So, you know, probably like 700 watts of solar, 600 watts of solar would be enough. Um, 100 amp hours of lithium on top of what you need for other things would be plenty. And, uh, a system like this and you may never sweat in your bed again. Oh, um, I keep coming. Oh, um, this is all adjustable in speed. I've got a little potentiometer here poorly installed. I probably won't show it to you because the wiring is icky here. But can you hear that? I can change the speed that the compressor runs at and dial it right in where I want it. So if you had a little bigger space and it wasn't quite working, you sacrifice a little more electricity, but you know, you get more cold. Or you can say, hey, this thing's just running really fine. I, I don't need as much power. You just crank it down a little bit. It's quieter if you crank it down. Not that I think anybody would say this is particularly loud. Um, but it's 
Well, anyway, it's been working for me for a year. I think it's probably durable enough to say this is something that you should have on your boat. But it is what it is. So, that's my air conditioning. If you look at that and say, well, that's crazy. I don't want that many solar panels on my boat. Well, thanks for watching. If you're one of these guys that's a little concerned about how uncomfortable you're going to be when you get down to the tropics, or you're living aboard your boat in Florida and uh, you really can't run a generator out at anchor or out in the mooring, or <laughs> it's probably going to be the thing for a lot of you. You got a wife that's not 100% happy with the idea of cruising, but she's being a good sport and you want to keep her being a good sport, you, and you're saying, damn it, I want one of these. I'm going to get them into your hands. I was going to do it totally a DIY, get your own parts, but there's a lot of reasons that's just not going to work for most of you. Um, so what I'm thinking about doing is this. If enough of you want one, and how I'm going to know enough of you want one in the first phase is fill out that survey down in the description. Say the actual words, Clark, I want one. And tell me in what of these three flavors you're most interested in. There'll be one price that will be a box of parts. And uh, here's your box of parts. There you go. I sourced them, got a good deal on them, but here they are and it'll be worth it. Number two option. Here's the system all put together on a sled, and here's the air handler separate, just like uh, Isotherm and Adler Barber do with refrigerations. You hook them up, put them in place, run some line between them, go get a fridge guy to come in, uh, vacuum them down and charge them, and you're good. Third option, just like Isotherm and Adler Barber do it. Here's that thing I just described before, but there's already tubing on it, the right length. Probably when you place your order, say I need 12 feet of tubing or whatever and we'll pre-charge them and you do that quick connect thing and uh, lock them together once and you're good. Uh, so you won't need a fridge guy. But those will be the three possibilities. Obviously the price goes up as we have to do more work. But uh, if I knew what you need, I'll go to town on this. Got a guy in Florida that I trust that's going to put them together. Uh, he'll get a fridge guy to actually charge them and everything. So it'll all be done that way professionally. And uh, I see no reason why anybody with basic screwdriver skill, anybody basically that can put in an isotherm refrigerator can do one of these. In many ways, this is easier. I need a minimum of 50 people that are serious. And how I'm gonna define serious is first stage before I put any more effort into it, you get down and you fill out that survey and say, Clark, I am serious. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, this thing works. Um, hopefully you got some trust for me, so just watching how I'm doing videos. I am not trying to make a business. Oh my God, do I not want to run this thing like a business. I'm retired from all of that. I just want to share this cool idea. I guess that about covers it for the air conditioning. Sorry it's been so long, you know. I first had to talk about batteries, then I had to talk about refrigeration. Finally, hot enough day, got inspiration. Here it is. Uh, if you like it, I'll pass it around. Tell everybody you know with a boat that, you know, if they're more than five pounds overweight, they're going to want one of these things. So please pass this video around. Suggest it to people. Make your buddies happy. And if you really, really like it, as I always say, buy me a beer on Patreon. Bye.